God! Oh, God! Movie stars are dead. Well, the concept of a movie star is dead, at least. The movie star is dead, and it has been dead ever since the 2010s began. And I'm not talking about there being literally no celebrities in film at the moment, as stars such as Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and Tom Cruise still have at least some value assigned to their names. But with that being said, even they have seen decreasing box office popularity in recent years based on purely their name recognition. Tom Cruise, who went from starring in original box office successes such as Top Gun, Rain Man, and Jerry Maguire, has not had a rousing box office success with an original film idea this entire decade. Films such as Edge of Tomorrow were a noted box office disappointment for Cruise, along with the films Oblivion, which weren't exactly a smash hit either. Now, you may be wondering about movies that he has starred in this decade, such as Mission Impossible 3, Mission Impossible 4, Mission Impossible 5, the Mummy, Jack Reacher 1, and Jack Reacher 2, surely those were at least some successful. Well, this sort of helps the point that I'm making in this video, and that is that these films are all based on pre-existing properties that have name recognition already applied to them. Whether it be based upon a true story, based on a novel, a sequel, or a reboot of another film, or a comic book, the vast majority of successful movies these days are successful based off of the popularity of not the star, but the popularity of the pre-existing material that the film was based on. Now, I don't want this video to be a sly dig on comic book movies, sequels, or reboots, as there are plenty of videos about that already. I more rather want this video to be an in-depth exploration of why the movie stars died, rather than a simple criticism of the redundancy of modern film. And I believe, to help solve why there are so little original film stars nowadays, we're gonna have to go back in time a bit. Jimmy? Hi, Gig. We asked Jimmy over today because he's a racing man himself. A real one, not a crazy one. Incidentally, I think I should explain that Jimmy just stepped over from the set of Giant. And need I add, he plays a Texan. Speaking of racing, have you ever been in a drag race? Are you kidding me? I just thought I'd ask. No, Jim races in the tradition, you might say. Real racing cars, real tracks. How fast will your car go? Oh, an honest miles an hour. Clocked it run about 106, 7. You've won a few races, haven't you? Oh, one or two. When you think of a cultural icon, who do you think of? Well, if you're like me, you probably equate decades such as the 50s with icons like James Dean and Elvis Presley, maybe the 60s as the Beatles and Sean Connery, 70s with Freddie Mercury, 80s with Michael Jackson, and so on. Every decade has a set of notable larger-than-life stars in media, whether it be in film, music, or television. It's rather interesting because until television and radio became widely accessible, we never had stars such as this. Beginning with cultural icons such as the Three Stooges and Charlie Chaplin, your status as a superstar used to wholly depend on your entertainment value and innovation. Then, as the time progressed, acting became more complex and factors such as talent and attraction became an enormous part of the equation. That's possibly why James Dean was the most famous actor in the world during the 50s. Because while he was attractive to a younger audience with his charismatic, greaser style and charm, he also had legitimate acting talent to back up his looks. The same merging of attraction and talent is a repeating aspect throughout acting history when you look at Hollywood's biggest stars. Marilyn Monroe, Robert De Niro, Harrison Ford, Will Smith, Johnny Depp, George Clooney, Sandra Bullock, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, and yes, even Tom Cruise. Every one of them has a solid, unique filmography that includes original and successful films. However, many of the more modern ones also star in films based on pre-existing material. As another example, look at Will Smith, once one of the highest paid and most prominent actors in modern cinema, kicking off unique and wealthy properties such as Bad Boys, Men in Black, and The Pursuit of Happiness, Smith has fallen from box office graces in the 2010s. Look at all of his failures when it comes to original movies that he starred in. Um, After Earth, Bright, Collateral Beauty? Now, once again, while those wholly original properties are box office bombs, we also have films such as Suicide Squad and Aladdin, both of which have grossed hundreds of millions of dollars, Aladdin even grossing well over a billion dollars. And those films were based on pre-existing properties. 
Actors are finally starting to get it. They're beginning to get that pre-existing properties are the most financially stable films that are released in theaters today. That's why Brad Pitt, who previously starred in a higher weight of indie films to mainstream Hollywood movies, has been appearing in more films like World War Z as of late instead of 12 Monkeys. Even actors that were previously unknown or down on their luck could become overnight sensations simply because of their roles in superhero films or reboots. Take Robert Downey Jr. for example, who was recovering from drug addiction when he made the first Iron Man, and he's now one of the most recognized and highest paid actors in the entire world. And he's also known to stick to scripts that are based on pre-existing creative material. Not only the Iron Man movies, but Zodiac, The Judge, and the upcoming Doolittle film are all based on pre-existing material, which is a very smart financial move. Even Chris Hemsworth, known for playing Thor in the MCU, has become an enormous household name for his rugged charm and engaging comedic talents. Hemsworth is the very definition of an acting superstar. Or rather, he would have been in decades past. Yes, while it's true that Hemsworth makes large sums of money working for Marvel, all of his films that are unique scripts are not nearly as successful. Bad Times at the El Royale and Black Cat were both box office bombs that were released in between some of Chris's most popular Marvel films. It's a peculiar and unprecedented time for cinema, and many studios are struggling to find out the formula to what is popular and what isn't popular nowadays. And there's still a question that I presented that has yet to receive an answer, and that is why film stars are dead. Well, it's simply because film is not the most popular creative media amongst kids anymore. The times have changed, and if you really want to know why the most and if you really want to know what the most popular creative media is at the moment, you should probably check what website you're watching this video on right now. That's right, folks. Social media platforms such as YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter are growing the next cultural icons before our very eyes. In fact, many of them have already come. Famous musicians such as Charlie Puth and Post Malone actually received their start on YouTube, as many rappers from the music platform SoundCloud. But if we're moving away from music and talking purely about the film and video medium, then YouTube has some loyal and incredibly popular artists on their hands, some of which are already cultural icons to rival the legacy of James Dean or Marilyn Monroe in their heyday. While the majority of people over the age of 30 have probably never heard of someone like PewDiePie, or other than maybe hearing their name in passing, I absolutely guarantee you that a minimum of 90% of people between the ages of 10 and 30 have either seen a PewDiePie video, are familiar with what he does and stands for, or are an active fan of PewDiePie. He's a completely original creator that's not signed to any brand or studio, and people relate that and find him to be incredibly down to earth throughout his videos on gaming, meme culture, or comedy. I truly believe that platforms such as YouTube are the future for icons such as PewDiePie, as not only is it completely free, but it also features such a diverse set of videos and video genres that literally anyone alive can find an icon they'd be interested in. If you enjoy real life events and vlogs, and you have people such as Casey Neistat and David Dobrik, two incredibly influential YouTubers that have impacted the website and entertainment world in general through their use of non-fictional storytelling. Or perhaps you're into makeup and physical art, which is dominated by popular figures such as Jeffree Star or James Charles. If you like comedy, then it's hard to escape names such as Liza Koshy or the duo formerly known as Smosh. While mainstream media such as news outlets and more serious film studios belittled YouTube as a creative medium, it's obviously just because it's more recent than any other media. Older generations belittled radio back in the early 20th century as they did movies and television. The generation before the 1950s did not want to watch James Dean perform as he wasn't what they considered to be a quote-unquote good actor. It's the exact same thing with YouTube and modern YouTubers such as PewDiePie. Older generations may not get it, and may not consider these people to be cultural icons yet, but this is more of an honest and DIY approach to media, one that anyone can enjoy and respect. It's making art cheaper, more accessible to everyone, and more evolving. Because of this, we don't only have cultural icons now, we have more than ever, and they will continue to grow over time. While this may not be the sole reason why movie stars are in short supply these days, it is an important reason to think about. The next decade begins and social media begins to grow even faster and evolve even further, pay close attention to how mainstream media treats its growth and development. You may see new stars come and go in the film industry, but if you look close enough, you may just begin to see elements of modern media incorporated into traditional media, because that's just what happens over time. And maybe, just maybe, people will finally realize that movie stars are dead, not because art is dead, but because art has changed.
Hey, thank you so much for watching if you're still watching at this point. I put a lot more effort into this video in terms of presentation and editing than I usually do. Uh, it's a lot more in-depth than my usual garbage troll videos, and I enjoy making these a lot more because they're very rewarding to me. So if you want to see a lot more videos like this, such as video essays and in-depth topic videos, just press like and comment down below what you like the most about this video, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. I usually say this stuff ironically, but it means so much to me at this point in time. But don't worry, I've got another trash troll comedy video coming your way soon if this isn't your thing. So once again, just let me know. Love you guys. Bye-bye.